Let's talk about alcohol. What the Bible says about this topic is actually as clear and transparent as alcohol itself. No need for any more debate or confusion. See for yourself. My name is Justin Tarosian and welcome to another Tough Tuesday where you give us hard and controversial verses and we unpack the meaning together. The context of today's verse is that Jesus is at a wedding feast where they ran out of wine and Jesus performs his first miracle. John 2 verse 9 says, When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine. So culturally in Jesus' day, to not have enough wine at a feast was a terrible thing. And this young couple was going to start off their married life with a ruined reputation. But Jesus stepped in to save the day. Now you might be thinking, well, if Jesus made wine, then of course we can have it too. But before you jump to that conclusion, remember that this was a Jewish wedding feast and Jesus himself was a Jew. What was their scriptural understanding of alcohol? Well, in the Bible's longest passage about drinking, in the book of Proverbs, we find a list of 10 things that alcohol does to someone. And you might have a personal experience or have seen somebody who was drunk that, and you can testify to the accuracy of this list. First, it gives sorrow. It leads to strife and arguments. If you drink, you'll have wounds without cause or unnecessary injuries. It's deceptively attractive. Just think, how many TV commercials have you seen with a, a drunk guy uh, beating his wife and kids or a homeless beggar trying to scrape up enough money for another bottle of liquor? None, because beer and liquor companies are smarter than that. They make drinking look as fun as possible. The Bible warns us though, don't buy it. It's like snake poison is the next description. It destroys your body. It also says your eyes will see strange things. And as we know from modern medical science, long-term drinking can lead to alcohol hallucinosis. Your mouth will speak perverse things, the Bible says there, which means you won't have a filter. You'll just say stupid stuff. Next, you'll struggle to walk in a straight line. Uh, you become numb to the things that should hurt you. People will beat you up and you won't feel it. And the list ends by saying, when shall I awake that I may seek another drink? In other words, the last and tenth descriptor is that alcohol is addictive. Now, how many of those ten things are positive? Not one. The Bible gives us the warning, stay away from alcohol because it's dangerous to your life. There are stories in the Old Testament, of course, of people getting drunk, but this doesn't mean that God approved of it. In fact, it's an important Bible principle to remember that in Bible study, we should follow the, the example of people when they did right and avoid their mistakes when they did wrong. So what about the wine at the feast? Would Jesus make something to give to the Jewish guests there that was destructive to their bodies and forbidden in the scripture that they followed? The answer is simple, he didn't. The word for alcoholic wine is oinos. But oinos is not only the word for alcoholic wine, but also the word for grape juice. Of course, Jesus didn't make the alcoholic oinos because that would be against the scriptures that he himself based his life upon as well as his Jewish guests. He's a God who says, behold, I make all things new. Not old and fermented, but new. Jesus turned water to pure, fresh grape juice. Some Christians quote scientific studies that show that red wine is good for you because it has resveratrol. But that doesn't actually come from the alcohol, it comes from the skin of the grapes. And pure grape juice actually has just as much resveratrol as red wine, but without any of those 10 bad effects that alcohol brings. Isaiah 65 verse 8 says, As the new wine is found in the cluster. What kind of liquid is found in a cluster of grapes? Pure grape juice. No alcohol. Just sweet goodness. This is the kind of oinas that Jesus made. Are you willing to consider and apply what the Bible says and skip the alcoholic beverages from now on? Let us know your response in the comment section below. And if you want to study more on this topic, you can find some links to more resources in the description below. And as always, write any questions that you have in the comments too. Thanks so much for joining us on this Tough Tuesday. And you can also share your thoughts with us and suggestions for tough verses in the comments and we'll try to tackle them in the future. If you don't want to miss out on any future videos, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, Maranatha, and we'll see you next time.